Now we're going to take a look at questions four through six. So in question four, notice it says up here that this is an unbalanced equation. An unbalanced equation means that you've got to actually put the coefficients in and make it balance. So if you look at the equation, you can see that there are two oxygens over here, three oxygens there. So I'm going to need to use coefficients, put a three there, and put a two there. When balancing equations, of course, you have, when you put a number in front, you also affect the elements in it that were there in addition to the one that you were originally working with, like the oxygen was three, so you need to multiply by two to get six. So that gave you two Ks and two CLs, so you had to put a two over here to make it balance. So there's our balanced equation. Since this is given us grams, what's the first thing we're gonna to have to do? Change grams to moles. Then use the mole ratio, and this one asks for mass, so we're gonna have a third step is change back to grams. So here we go. We have 458 grams of potassium chlorate. Potassium's 39. Chlorine is 35. Oxygen is 16, but there are three of them, so that's a total of 48. That total is 122. So we're going to multiply then, put grams on the bottom, put moles on the top, because we're changing to moles. It's important that you write down the chemical that you're talking about. Now that I've got, I'm gonna erase this to be less confusing. Okay, now we'll go back and put our numbers in. That was 122 and one mole. Since moles are here, we're gonna put moles on the bottom. And we're gonna put moles of what we're looking for on top. What were we looking for? It says mass of oxygen, so we would need to find moles of oxygen first. The number in front of the oxygen is a three, the number in front of the potassium chlorate is a two, right there. Now we have moles of O2, so we put moles of O2 on the bottom. And we want to find grams, because I think it asked for mass, not volume. Yes, mass of oxygen, so grams of O2. If it had asked for volume, you'd use liters up here, and it'd be 22.4. All right, so oxygen is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Doing the, the math on this, you got 458 then. Multiply that by 3, by 32. Actually, times 1, times 3, times 32. I got a number that's too big that time, so I'm going to try it again. 458 times 3 times 32. All right, so I get 43,968 in case you're doing it with me. Then I'm going to divide by 122, and then divide that again by 2, and I get 180.2. So my final answer, 180.2 grams, or you could just say equals 180 grams would be fine. Next question, number five, we're given moles, so do we need to change to moles? No, so because already in moles. So 58 moles. You always do the mole ratio. So let's do that next. Moles of C6H4 on the or six C6H14 on the bottom. What were we looking for? Moles of water. What are the numbers? 14 and 2. Do we need to change to grams or anything? Nope. Just says moles of water. So it'd be 58 times 14, then divide by 2, which gives us a 406 mole quantity of water. And that would be your final answer on this one. This is just a one-step problem because you're given moles and asked for moles. All right, number six, you're given grams. You want to find mass, so this is going to be a three-stepper. So 255 grams of C2H4. I'm going to put grams of C2H4 on the bottom. How do I know that? Because they're right here. Put moles of C2H4 on top. Then one mole, one always goes to moles except in the mole ratio. And the number of grams of C2H4 would be 12 times 2 is 24 plus 4 is 28. Next step. Moles of C2H4 on the bottom. 
Moles of what you're looking for on top. What are we looking for? Carbon dioxide. And remember, it says mass of carbon dioxide, but before you can find mass, you have to find moles. So there's a 2 there in front of the carbon dioxide. There's a 1 in front of the C2H4. Then the last step, you're going to put moles of CO2 on the bottom, and you put grams of CO2 on top because that's what you're looking for. 1 goes to moles. This weight is 12 plus 16 plus 16. Because there are two oxygens, and that's where I got the 44. Alright, so doing the math on that, 255 times 2 times 44. and divide by 28. I get 801. All right, I'm going to just double check my math. So 88, 255, divided by 28, 801. All right, that's the final answer on that one. All right, down here. This one was the hardest question on the test because you had to write your own equation. So it says aluminum plus hydrogen chloride. Now you notice that I am writing the symbols in first. So I've been working with a few of you on this. So symbols first, then charge, then formulas, then balance. All right, so here's my symbols. Okay, now, charge. Since aluminum is by itself, it's zero. And since hydrogen is by itself, it's zero, but hydrogen is part of Brinkelhoff, so you have to put a two there. Brinkelhoff elements occur in pairs. Hydrogen here is plus one, chlorine is minus one. So plus one and minus one, that formula seems to be okay when we get there. So that's plus three, and that's minus one. So now I just put the charges up. Now formulas. This formula is as it stands, it's just by itself. Hydrogen's plus one, chlorine's minus one, so that formula is okay because the charges are balanced. Aluminum is plus three and chlorine's minus one, so you're going to need to put a, th a three after um, the aluminum. Excuse me, after the chlorine, like that. All right, because three ones match that three. Then hydrogen is zero because it's by itself. It does have to have the two because of Brinkelhoff. Now, maybe I haven't emphasized this enough with you, but after you do the charges, you forget about them. So let's just take them out of there. Now we are ready to balance the equation. So we look at this and we see, well, there are three chlorines. So I put a three chlorine, or three in front of the chlorines, which gave me three also, it also gives me three hydrogens. And the, the coefficient, again, has to go in front of the whole formula. Over here, there's two hydrogens. So what is a common multiple of 2 and 3? is 6. I'm going to have to put a 3 here. Now I'm going to have to go back and change the 3 that I put over here. Let's get rid of it. And we need to make it become what? So 3 times 2 is 6, so I put a 6 over here. When I put the 6 there, that gave me 6 chlorines as well. Over here, there are 3 chlorines. So what would go in front? 2. And that gives me 2 atoms of aluminum, so I have to put a 2 in front of the aluminum to balance it. So now it's a balanced equation. Question says we have grams. So will we need to change that to moles? Yes. So 524 grams of HCl. We're going to put grams of HCl on the bottom over here and moles on the top because the first step is changed to moles. One mole, 36 grams. I got 36 by using uh, one and for the hydrogen and one for the chlorine. So, uh, excuse me, 35 for the chlorine. So this one is one. This is 36, 35. And one plus 35 is 36.
And that noise you hear in the background is my dog Axel kind of dreaming. <laughs> The second step in doing these problems is to use the mole ratio. So we're going to put moles of HCl on the bottom and moles of what we're looking for on top. What are we looking for? Let's see. How, what mass of hydrogen? So we're going to have moles of hydrogen on top. Mass is measured in grams, but before we can find grams, we have to find moles. So we're going to put a 3 in front of the hydrogen and a 6 in front of the HCl. At that point, we're ready to do the last step, which is change the grams. So we're going to put the unit that's up here, down at the bottom, and then grams of H2 here. So what number goes with moles? Everywhere except in the mole ratio, the mole ratio is here, except here, 1 goes with moles. And since hydrogen has a mass of 1, 1 times 2 is 2, that's 2 grams per mole. So now we're ready to do the math, 524. Multiply by 1, multiply by 3, multiply by 2, then divide by 36, and divide again by 6. Final answer, 14.6 grams of hydrogen. So again, we have three steps. Oops. We're going to change to moles. That's this step. Use the mole ratio. That's that step. Change to grams. And that's that step. Then do the math. All right, that's the test. I'll have them ready for you next week um, to do it again if you'd like.